quick revision video on pH titration curve calculations. So this has got the same idea as the buffer solution calculations video I uploaded a week ago or so. So I've got three different past exam questions all asking something slightly different about this topic. So as before, if you want to pause the video on each question, have a go and then play on to hear the answers. So here's the first one. So part A, we've got to calculate the concentration of the nitric acid. Well, you can see from the titration curve at the start, it starts at pH 1. So the H plus concentration is 10 to the minus pH, which is 10 to the minus 1 or 0 0.1. And because it's a strong acid, it's fully dissociated. So that 0 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed of H plus ions has come from this. So the ratio is telling you that that must also be 0 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed. Part B, how can we tell that the ammonia is a weak base from the curve? Well, you can see that it's finishing at a, um, an alkaline pH, but it's not massively high. It's not up to 14. So we could go for that. Or we could say the pH at equivalence is less than 7, because that's a feature of a strong acid weak base titration curve. Part C, the formula of the salt that's formed. Well, ammonia reacts with nitric acid to form ammonium nitrate. And there's the formula NH4NO3. Part D, a suitable indicator for the titration. So basically, we're looking for an indicator whose pH range lies in the vertical section. And there's only one from the list. It is the resazurin with a 3.8 to 6.4 um, pH range. And finally, part E, if the student repeated the titration with double the concentration of the ammonia, well, double the concentration will half the um, titration value, the equivalence point, so we'd get a vertical section at 12 and a half. And the other difference, if you're using a more concentrated ammonia, then the pH at the end is going to be a bit higher. Because remember, you've just got ammonia left in the flask at the end because all the acid's gone. So it'll finish a bit higher. So here's number two. So we'll start with the initial pH of the solution. So ethanoic acid's a weak acid. So the H plus concentration of a weak acid is the square root of the acid dissociation constant multiplied by the initial concentration of the acid. So when you put those numbers in, Ka 1.78 times 10 to the minus 5 and the initial concentration of 0 0.01 you get an H plus concentration of that. And so therefore we just need to minus log that and we get the pH of 3.37. The final pH of the solution, a little bit trickier. You've got to think what we've got in the flask at the very end of the titration. Well, we've got 30 cm cube left over of that 0 0.01 mole per decimeter cubed KOH. So that's because 20 cm cubed of the 50 KOH that's added is going to have reacted with the acid so there'll be 30 left but it's in a total volume of 70 cm cubed so we're going to work out the moles of OH minus ions and then turn that into a concentration so that's the calculation there so moles concentration times volume and then concentration of the OH minus ions is the moles divided by the total volume of the solution 70 that comes out at 4.29 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per decimeter cubed and because we're calculating the pH of a strong base, we need to do the H plus concentration equal to Kw, the ionic product of water, divided by the OH minus ion concentration. So there's the calculation there, and we get an H plus concentration of 2.33 times 10 to the minus 12 moles per decimeter cubed, minus log that, we get a pH of 11.63. So our curve needs to start at 3.37 and finish at 11.63. So the vertical section, so the acid and alkali are both at 0 0.01 mole per decimeter cube concentration. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. So if you've got 20 cm cubed of acid, you're going to need 20 cm cubed of the alkali. So the curve will look like that. So it's starting at 3.4, sort of rises, flicks up at 20 
and then it plateaus at 11.63. In terms of indicator, there's actually two possible choices. You could go for either of those two because both of their pH ranges lie in that vertical section. So as long as you qualify why you've chosen, say, thymol blue with that statement, you'd be absolutely fine. So here's the last one. So essentially, this is just a straightforward titration calculation, but we haven't been given the mean titra. Instead, we've just got this titration curve to work with. So what we're going to do is use that vertical section. Remember, that's telling us the volume of the substance in the burette that's needed to neutralize the substance in the conical flask. So this is the volume of ammonia needed, so 15 cm cubed. So now we'll just run through the calculation. Moles of HCl, we knew the concentration and volume, so that's 4 times 10 to the minus 4. It's a 1 to 1 ratio, so the moles of ammonia in that 15 cm cubed is the same. And then turn that into a concentration, moles over volume, and you get 0 0.0267. And then finally, in terms of indicator, again, we're looking for one that has a pH range in the vertical section. There's only one in this case. It's chlorophenol red.